Well, it's nice to see so many of people come out tonight on a rainy night to hear about common sense gun laws. As Michelle mentioned, the Illinois campaign to prevent gun violence is a public policy based public education campaign. One of the things we've done before undertaking any legislation, both in 2007 and again at the start of this legislative session, was to conduct a statewide polling on the issue of common sense gun laws. Over 612 registered voters were polled statewide, um, which is, for those of you who like to snicker, the average statewide polling sample in a gubernatorial election. Additionally, the poll measured voter attitudes in three Illinois state senate districts and six Illinois state house districts, including four DuPage County House districts. Um, among the results that were in this year's polling were that on the question of should the state require every gun purchaser to undergo a background check, whether the weapon is bought from a licensed gun dealer or a private seller. Over 9 out of 10 Illinois voters support closing this private sale loophole. With 86% of Illinois voters outside of Chicago and the Collar counties supporting such a measure. Support for universal background checks was strong among Republicans at 85%, gun owners at 79%, and NRA members at 70%. Oh, 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 be careful. Second Amendment resolution. I was never bold. Oh, I got a poll. Never. Nice. Should the state reach, should the state require gun owners to inform law enforcement if any of their guns are lost or stolen? Again, nearly 95% of all Illinois voters support requiring gun owners to inform law enforcement if any of their guns are lost or stolen. And most voters, over 83%, strongly support such a measure. Moreover, 9 out of 10 gun owners and NRA members support this increased responsibility for gun owners. As you can see, statewide, the support for common sense gun legislation is overwhelming. Uh, I believe next up will be Garrett Evans. Oh, uh, no, I'm going to, um, we're going to come to Garrett in just a second. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mark. Sure. Thank you, Mark. All right. Wow. So this year, the Illinois Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence is working on passing a very important law that would require anyone buying a handgun in Illinois to pass a background check. And this is important because the law currently requires a background check only if you buy from a dealer or at a gun show. And this means that kids and other people who shouldn't have guns uh, can easily get them. Well, criminals shouldn't be allowed to get guns. I think we can probably, most of us can agree on that. shared by most in America, no matter which side of the, the debate they find themselves. Convicted felons, domestic abusers, and those with dangerous mental illnesses are among those from, from prohib being, are prohibited from buying or owning guns. However, the lack of consistent laws means that criminals still do obtain guns. The only remaining category that does not currently require a background <laughs> check in Illinois is the private sale transfer. But unfortunately, this accounts for nearly 40% of all transfers in Illinois. So this session, um, Rep Representative Osterman had a bill to address this issue, and it would have required a background check on private gun sales. Background checks are a vital tool in helping to protect the public. In 2007, background checks by licensed gun dealers and gun shows in Illinois detected 859 Floyd card holders who had fallen into prohibited purchaser categories since obtaining their board cards. 
And thanks to background checks, these individuals were denied guns. Nationwide, the private sale loophole results in guns getting in the hands of criminals who would otherwise not be able to buy firearms. Roughly 20% of gun trafficking investigations involve transfers by sellers who are not required to conduct a background check. Closing the private sale loophole for handguns will not only keep these dangerous weapons out of the wrong hands, but will also make it harder for private sellers to profit selling handguns to criminals. And this is the most outrageous part of the issue. Because, because these dangerous weapons are being sold to private sellers to make profits, and they're being sold to criminals. So we're pleased to add our voices here today um, to universal background checks, and we're hoping that it will become law in Illinois. All right. So let's talk about now, really quickly. People leave! Let's talk about how you can make a difference. Well, it's important that we become as citizens, and this is um, it's just a, a cornerstone of the LEAP principle. It's important that we as citizens be involved, and it's important that we stay active and that, that our legislators hear from us. So often they don't, unfortunately. And um, it's unfortunate, too, that, that while there is not um, an issue of apathy on this subject, we We've gone and met with legislators along with uh, large crowds of people, people from the medical community, people from the faith community, students, um, League of Women Voters members. There's not a problem with apathy. I think there's a problem in educating our legislators. And this is one of the things that the League is dedicated to doing. It's important that we as citizens make our voices heard. So what I would suggest um, to each of you is that in order to make yourselves heard, you write a letter to the editor. Letters to the editor are important and they make a difference. I think it's also important for people to um, to talk to your peers about gun violence prevention and the policies that can prevent it. It's only with um, that knowledge that we can grow the information and it's only with, when we grow the information that more people hear it and ultimately the legislators hear it. Um, it's unfortunate that um, uh, there are many citizens who don't um, stay involved in their government. And that's why I'm so inspired to be here tonight, because um, the League of Voters of Wheaton North are some students who have already shown, who've demonstrated commitment uh, to being involved in the process, and I'm very proud of them. I'm also proud of our, our next speaker. Our next speaker is um, a young man who was a college student, um, just like a lot of the League of Voters students will be very shortly. and. Um, he was a young man who um, went off to school, I'm sure nervous, like so many young college students are when they go. Um, but he had something else to fear, and he's going to share his story with us. And I'm going to insist at this point that there be absolutely no heckling. All right, I'd like to in invite Garrett Evans to come and tell us about what it was like for him 